Welcome back, builders. I'll be taking you on a few random motorized bike adventures today. First, we got this borescope. I'm going to see if it's any good for peeking inside motors without removing the head and examining the cylinder walls. Next, we randomly decided to try DoorDash. We did a couple of runs on a gas bike, a few runs on the electric, and lastly, I finally had a chance to put some good runs on this hydraulic clutch system. More on that in a little bit. So sit back and enjoy the rides. Alright, first up is this rigid borescope. This was sent to me from a company called Kaizi. I'm pretty sure I said that wrong. Anyways, this is designed for rifle barrels. In this situation, I thought it could be useful as a multi-use tool. Obviously, this was designed for rifles, so it's not going to be ideal for small engines. But, it's not completely useless. So, if you're thinking about getting one as a multi-use tool, here are my results. And I know nothing about endoscopes or borescopes. This is the first one I've ever had, so keep that in mind. I have nothing to compare it to. It claims to be waterproof. It also claims to have a 1080p display, but I am pretty positive this is just an upscaled resolution. This camera is microscopic, which means it needs a lot of light which it has. It has an adjustable light on the end that does a pretty good job. You have to play with it to get the exposure just right. It also means that the refresh rate is going to be slow. This is probably like 15 frames per second, maybe less. So once you find a trouble area, you have to let it sit still for, you know, a second to make sure you get a good image. If it's shaky, you're not going to get good results. All right, so using it inside small motors through the spark plug hole to see if you can examine cylinder walls. And I found that it looks like you would be able to use this to identify severe damage, like gouging or lining that's flaking off. Um, I can see most of the cylinder wall with this endoscope, especially when I use the little screw-on mirror attachment. But there are situations where it's not as useful. Trying to see the tops of the transfer ports with the piston at bottom dead center was really, really difficult. And because this is a borescope, which is designed to be right up against the rifling of a barrel, it has a macro lens, meaning that you have to be within a few millimeters of whatever you're looking at to get a view in focus. Unfortunately, it doesn't have an adjustable lens to, you know, move that focus out a few more millimeters, which would have been more useful in our situations. And the camera itself does not unscrew from this tube, this long aluminum tube which means getting the right angles is not always very good. So using a borescope for examining your motor is fine if you already have one, but I wouldn't get one of these for that purpose. I would get the endoscopes with the flexible tips and not the rigid bodies. But with that being said, let's go ahead and throw it down a couple of rifle barrels real quick and see how that turns out. First up, I got this old Russian surplus rifle. This is a Mosin Nagant. These were really popular a few years ago. Everybody bought them up, and I was one of those people who bought one of them because they were cheap, and they look super cool. Now, this one cannot hit the broadside of a barn from day one. It's incredibly inaccurate, and I suspected that the rifling is shot, uh, which turns out to be the case. Sticking the borescope down this rifle shows that the rifling is pretty much done. It's not uncommon for these rifles to have terrible bores. They shot corrosive surplus ammunition, which if not cleaned immediately and properly would basically eat away at the barrel very quickly. And all the pitting and corrosion on this one shows that she's done. Maybe someday I'll get it re-bored, but uh, I doubt it. It's just a cool rifle to have. We also stuck it down a 5.56 barrel, a 45 Colt, and a 45.70. Now the 45 Colt is my favorite rifle, so we'll focus on this one the most, just to check it out and see how it's been doing. Now these rifles have mostly gone unused for a few months, and this being Louisiana with the humidity of a public restroom means that surface rust is not uncommon. I'll, I oil these before I put them up, but I always wonder how good of a job I've done. 
and it looks like not very good as I can see some spots of surface rust on my 45 Colt. So I'm going to give this a good cleaning when I'm done making the video. This be my favorite rifle. It's a 45 Big Boy from Henry. It's a good rifle. Uh, 4570 showed similar results, and so did the 556. Rust just gets at everything out here, even with these being stored in a controlled environment. So, I can't say much. These are the results and image quality I got out of this rigid bore scope from Kaizy. There'll be a link in the description to the Amazon page if it's something you're interested in. Alright, next up, let's go ahead and tell you about my thoughts and opinions on this hydraulic clutch system. I will have a dedicated video on this motor in the future after I get a few hundred miles on it, just to see, you know, how well this clutch system holds up. As far as the motor goes, I, I believe it's just a standard Zeta 4440 with a G4 cylinder, which is good because they have strong out-of-the-box performance and a large upgrade path with a lot of potential. Now, first thing I did was get rid of the Bafang carburetor that it came with because I don't want to deal with leaking issues in a couple of months. And because the real NT Speed is my favorite, that's easier to tune because I have jets for it. The good old NT Speed. I then proceeded to port the G4 cylinder, window the piston, and slap on this OZ Reed that I've had sitting around for a long time. I've seen what G4s can get out of a piston port intake, so putting the reed on it wasn't really for performance. Maybe it helps, but I doubt it. It does help with fuel economy, though, and gas prices are high, so that's good. And, well, I had it sitting around and didn't want it to go to waste, so we used it. To keep this short and simple, this hydraulic clutch system behaves about exactly as I imagined it would before actually owning one. If you've examined some pictures, then you kind of know what to expect, and that's pretty much what you get especially if you've used hydraulic versus mechanical disc brakes or driven a motorcycle, dirt bike, or dual sport. Pretty much the same feel you get out of those clutch systems is what you get here. The clutch pull is very smooth, it's easier to pull in, and a little bit easier to hold down for extended periods of time, which is important because there's no trigger or button lock on the clutch lever. The clutch is also a little bit easier to feather from a dead stop or at low speed operations where you have to rev the motor and gently apply the clutch. You'll be able to do that with more precision on the hydraulic system. I find that because there's no locking mechanism on the clutch lever, this isn't really a practical option for daily drivers. And there's another reason which we'll get into in a moment, but not having a lock on the lever makes this a little inconvenient in a lot of situations for obvious reasons. However, if it's a build you're using just for fun, on a track, or as a trail bike, probably not going to be an issue and this system would be a convenience. Now at the moment, the biggest downside I see about this system is the fact that you're not going to find any replacement parts for the foreseeable future. At least, not until these are sold independently, because at the moment, I can only find these hydraulic clutches on entire motor kits. I'll leave a link in the description to where I got mine from Amazon, but after I bought mine, the price shot up from $125 to $140 and then went out of stock. However, I've seen them bouncing around on eBay, so there's a good chance you can find one if you really want to. You're also stuck with a fixed length of hydraulic cable unless you want to cut and make your own hose with fittings. Now as far as replacement parts go, uh, you could probably deal with the clutch lever, the hose, the fittings, but say you forget to grease your bucking bar and you damage the piston to the point that it starts leaking hydraulic fluid or the seal for the piston gets damaged, I have no idea where you would look to try and find a suitable replacement. I did stick a magnet to the piston, and it is steel, so that's a good thing, it's not aluminum, so it should last a pretty long time, and have even considered cutting out some steel plates to fit inside the piston to act as a wear plate. You know, save the piston in the long run, and have a small piece of circular metal that you can replace as it starts to eat away. Another big advantage of the hydraulic clutch system is it's self-adjusting. The piston will push in as you pull the lever, and the force from the clutch's mainspring will push it back. However, the clutch's piston has a lot of travel, meaning that 
as parts wear down, it can push out a good distance. So you won't have to go through the tedious process of constantly readjusting your clutch cable as parts wear in. This is a big bonus. Cable routing for the hydraulic hose is a bit tricky. It's most likely going to stick to the left side of the motor because of where it comes out of the case. So keep that in mind if you have an exhaust system. You do not want to burn through this hose. You'll lose your clutch and have a difficult time replacing that hose. Mine didn't appear to have any air in the system from the factory, which is great. But it looks like a very easy system to bleed if you need to. So these are just a few of the highlight pros and cons that I've noticed immediately upon using the bike for the first couple of miles. We'll keep you guys updated and have a dedicated video in the future. Let's go ahead and finish this video off with some door dashing on the motorized bikes. I know this is a bit random, so here's the story behind this. I think about a year ago, I was watching some motorized bike videos and one popped up of a kid doing door dashing on a gas powered motorized bike. More power to him because he got to do something that was enjoyable and make money the easy way, if done safely. I left it alone, thought it was cool, but randomly YouTube uh, about a week ago started recommending all these DoorDash videos to me. And I started watching this one guy who does most of his dashing in a city on a beefy electric scooter. I started thinking, you know, that's kind of fun. Let's try it. Fifteen minutes later, I was an official DoorDasher. I, literally it was 15 minutes I just got on the app signed up passed a background check that they do for free and it's officially just whenever you want to DoorDash you DoorDash and uh, if you can if you don't know what this is um, it's basically people order food through the app from various restaurants uh, a notification will pop up on your phone when you're active when you have the app on and it'll tell you where to pick up the food and where to drop it off. And for the most part, there's very little interaction with the customer or the consumer. I mean, it's a pretty cool concept. Now, here's why I really like the idea, and I've been trying it out and having some fun. Uh, I need to improve my technique, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but I live in the middle of my small town. The most populated restaurants, which we don't have very many of, are close to me, and so are all the possible drop-off locations. I literally spent my first two days of door dashing at my house in the air conditioner, relaxed, working on a bike. It was actually working on the hydraulic clutch bike that you just saw. And, well, it's a small town, so we don't get very many orders, which is kind of fine with me. Um, I would just have the app open with my phone on the charger, and sure enough, a couple of orders came in. And I'd hop on the bike, go pick it up, drop it off, come back home. And the, the longest round trip I think I've done so far is three miles. <laughs> and uh, made some extra cash. And I get to ride my bikes. And I am always looking for an excuse to ride my bikes. I love getting out and riding. Now, I jumped straight on the gas bike to start this with, which probably wasn't a great idea. I got lucky didn't have any issues but with my first few orders having never done this before and only watched a few videos not exactly sure what to expect um, in hindsight I, I should have started with the electric bikes just so I would have one less thing to worry about but heck it we hopped on the same bike that we used for the 4th of July it had a bike rack stuck our bike bag on there a backpack and started delivering and immediately realized that some of these orders are too big 
for saddlebags. So we went and grabbed my girl's hot and cold bag that for some reason she just had. Lucky me. Which happens to be nice and big to fit pretty much any possible order within reason. And I've been I've been using that because uh, b- my first couple of orders before I got that were, were a little sketchy. So here's the deal with DoorDash for me. I'm going to keep doing it for as long as I can get away with it on the bike. Just for fun and to make the videos. If I get deactivated because I'm not very good at it, no big deal. I got nothing to lose. But that being said, I still want to get people their food in good condition. So we're going to work on improving our technique so that, you know, people order something they expect quality. And I can make videos while doing this and having fun riding the bikes. So that's what's going on with the whole DoorDash thing that I've been testing out. Um, And you know what? It's super cool. I like it. This is probably going to be a fun series on the channel as we get more experience. So that's what we got for you guys today. I hope you got some useful information, or at the very least, were mildly entertained. Let me know what you think about the three different things you saw in this video, and what you'd like to see more of. Anyways, until next time, ride safe. requested you leave the order at their door. All right. They added the following instructions. Leave at my door. Leave at my door. Well, which one is your door? <laughs>